fresh, just memories. How they linger, how they ever flow my soul in the steel. Precious memories, how I prize them as the weary years unfold. Jesus whispers, I'll be with you. Just memories, how they linger, how they ever flood my soul in the stillness of the We had our meetings, which were monthly meetings. Uh, we had dues to pay. Uh, and also, uh, there was an insurance policy that each member had, you know. Uh, if this was back in the, back in the late 50s, however, I say middle 50s, that I was there. And um, we had leaders in the organization, and they had various jobs. It was a very, very secret organization. And, um, you know, to belong to that, that uh, the odd fellows, it was, you know, it was, it was a step up for a young person, you know. Uh, you got, you got really, a little more respect than all like that, you know, you just moved up in a different category in life, you know. <laughs> and um, it was really a nice affair. And about the hall, uh, we had all of our meetings on the second floor, you know. And no one had, other than the St. Luke's were allowed to go up the steps up, to, up there. The St. Luke's had their meeting at different times from the odd village. But I remember very much about the hall. I um, mean that was that was the only place that we had that we could go to for any entertainment or anything. And um, you know every, everybody had a real good time there. Uh, and, and then later on, the reason that I had to, had to drop out, I, I went to work at Hercules, and anybody know anything about that? It was shift work, and I dropped out then. But the they still carried on. <coughs> I paid my dues, but I couldn't get meetings like I used to. And it was really a nice affair. It really was. The hall would. I'm taking somebody else's time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Bless guilty, Ms. Walker, then we'll, I'm sure we'll have time for you to make some other comments. My name is uh, Beatrice Freeman Walker. I was a member of the St. Luke's. It was an independent order of the St. Luke's. And uh, this was a type of organization in which 
the blacks could buy insurance. All this originated from Richmond, Virginia, and it was founded by Mrs. Maggie L. Walker. To this day, Mrs. Maggie L. Walker, although she is dead, is a school in Richmond that's named after her. And it's a whole lot that people do not realize that she did. And it's a whole lot that people do not realize what the St. Luke's mean. Uh, why there was a, such an organization that sold insurance to black people. When if anybody died or anything like that, all the members of the St. Luke's wore certain outfit. I mean, they have to wear white on their head at the funeral, and they went and they perform a different order. These orders that you learned when you attended the meeting at the St. at the Oddfellows Hall. It's since we have been meeting and whatnot, Barbara has researched so much material on the St. Luke's and the Oddfellows Hall. And this is not just Blacksburg. This is nationwide, the St. Luke's and the Oddfellows Hall. Thank you. Um, just a note about St. Luke and Oddfellows. Both of these were mutual aid societies, and they were created by Blacks um, to help the poor in the need. They were the ones that provided um, support in terms of nursing home and um, insurance for people who had no other means of getting those types of support. And this organization, or these organizations were in Blacksburg. I think that's what's so exciting. They were here in this town. And Oddfellows Hall, as was is indicated in the material that you have, was built in 1905. So we're getting ready to celebrate it, 2005, it's my anniversary. Now, let's talk. When we met and, and ate and laughed and talked at my house the other night, there are a lot of wonderful stories that came up about living in New Towns. So I want to go back to that again and have you talk about the people in Newtown. I'm not sure if people have a sense of how many people live in that community, um, who they were. And I know some people said there were no leaders there. Some people right. said, oh, yeah, there were some people you considered leaders. Mm -hmm. So you just mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that. I'm going to start. Joanne, would you take okay. the lead? I know a lot of uh, Reese Christian. She, you know, she was just always there. She always took us fishing, always took us to the duck pond. And, she was just a mother to everybody in the community, and Mr. Hunnabell, he used to have us all down there and have make cookies and all and tell us stories. And it was just a Mayberg. It was just a wonderful place to be. We'd just go from house to house, and we was always, some of our was there, but you know, we never went without food or anything on our own guilty street. It's just, just a place to be. Okay. There are other black communities in Blacksburg. What was so special about Newtown? I think because the hall was there. And that time, like Aubrey says, we had nowhere else to go for entertainment. Mm -hmm. I remember, like I said, looking in the window at the dances. Then when I got old enough, I went to the dances there. They mm -hmm. had dances there. They had bingo parties there. Mm -hmm. I know the church used to have suppers there, mm -hmm. and they even had a square dance. I remember I went, I don't know whether you all remember Mr. Chippy Price that he read, mm -hmm. he lived upon Bitter Inn, they yeah. called it. Mm -hmm. But I remember one night I went to a square, a square dance there, and I danced to him, and I just went home and told Mama, boy, can Mr. Chippy dance, because he had club feet. But that didn't stop him. <laughs> Mm -hmm. He would have won if he had the band. But Newtown for me was just a special little town. Mm -hmm. Well, not a little town, but that's what they call mm -hmm. it, Newtown. And everybody there was very close. And like she said, Miss Reese, when I was young, Miss mm -hmm. Reese was like another mother to me. And that's Does anyone know where the name Newtown yeah, came from? How did that name come into existence? I have no idea. You know, 
I have often thought about the name of Newtown mm -hmm. myself. And you take, for instance, a county over from Montgomery County, Floyd County, it has a new town. And most of the black residents live in that area, in Floyd County. And it's somewhere else, I can't think of it now, in the state of Virginia, called a new town. And I've often wondered about that. So you're saying there are other settlements? Yes. Um, most of them are okay. black neighborhoods. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And the, it was a, excuse me for in, but oh, there was okay. a couple of preacher, preachers there. Okay. I remember Reverend Reed was there, and mm -hmm. his wife was very interested to go in the interest in the children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not appointed a leader, but she, and Reverend Codwell. Okay. He was very good with the children. Okay. Okay. And also Reverend Richmond. Well, so that was after my birth. <laughs> 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 I cannot forget Reverend Richmond. Yeah. Okay. The one thing that I loved about Newtown, I used to walk out there all the time. Of course, I lived on Jackson Street, but Newtown to me was like home. And there was no place in Blacksburg that had fruits like they had in Newtown. You don't even see these white uh, wax cherries anymore. But there was the biggest wax cherry tree right at the corner of Gilbert Street and what's the street that runs Pepper. up and down? Pepper. 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 It used to be Pepper Street, yeah. Pepper Street. And my aunt and uncle lived there in the back, right on the corner there. They had all kind of pear trees, apple trees, grapes. It was just like God put those fruit there for all the people. <laughs> because everybody in the community, they, raised, they had their own garden. And everybody can, and you never tasted such good canned food. Okay. Since Newtown was obviously very special and very dear to all of you, what happened? Everybody Why it moved away? Everybody moved away. Got okay. Got older. Uh, Got out. The younger, the younger people moved away. Mm -hmm. much. Any other theories? Well. From my point of view, they they got older and they passed away. Mm -hmm. The biggest portion, especially the ones that were left, which was big, the largest portion, was my family, mm -hmm. uh, my grandparents, great aunts, and so forth and so on. And and my two of my great aunts didn't have any children. Mm -hmm. So when they passed away, their property went to heirs. Mm -hmm. so it became heir property. So it was sold. And then some of the other people, as they're older, didn't have families. It was Aunt Laura, Miss mm -hmm. Nettie. They didn't. They didn't have families. Uh, and what's Miss Cleo? And a lot of people didn't have families. So when they passed away, the property was sold. Mm -hmm. And eventually, as now, everything out there. Well, everything on Gilbert Street now, with the exception of uh, Off Hall, uh, was sold uh, because. People no longer have families, and the younger ones, the very few, mm -hmm. the, other than us, have moved away mm -hmm. and, and off of Gilbert Street. But um, that's, that's one of the things that generally happens to any community eventually when, um, yeah, when people there get older mm -hmm. and then the younger ones go away because of jobs, schools, or whatever, or if they get married. Uh, on old uh, communities like Newtown, just eventually phase out. And that's why, personally, from my standpoint, uh, that people have become interested in um, the hall. Mm -hmm. This will preserve not only a part of Newtown, but it also preserves a uh, history of Blacksburg. Mm -hmm. Because we all know that once you lose something, it's lost. It's yeah. becomes just like animals become extinct when you become extinct. Mm -hmm. There's nothing there, and when you lose a part of something like this, it's like losing your hand or something. Mm -hmm. Once it's gone, it's gone, and you can't get it back. Mm -hmm. So I think this, what's happening now, taking place when you, it, it helps not only us as a black uh, community or race, it helps all of Blacksburg mm -hmm. because it's their history as well as ours. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, Newtown was a wonderful place to live. Um, it was just like an extended family. We all, in my, in my case, I eventually I found out that I was ended up being kin just about everybody out there. <laughs> I mean, it took me a few years. I, you know, I didn't know for quite a few years that I was, but in the last five, six years, I, I found I picked up a few first cousins that I didn't know I had. But, <laughs> um, but that's, that's wonderful because it gives me a few more people to grumble at. But no, <laughs> but I think this, the whole thing that's taken place is, is wonderful, it's marvelous, even though it's taken me a while to get on board. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> you get I guess it's better late than never. Right. And you get reported in a big way. So <laughs> it's wonderful. We appreciate your participation at this time. I think we're doing pretty well with time. Are we okay? Um, let's talk a little bit now about the Odd Fellows at St. Luke. Uh, what were those organizations like? I mean, you've given some introductory remarks, but uh, Mr. Mills, if you would talk a little bit about how, how did you? decide to get involved in Odd Fellows? Well, the Odd Fellows, you know, it wasn't an organization where you just wanted to go into, or you, even if you wanted to go into, you know, uh, there was a process of, you had to fill out an application. This applica application would go in to the Odd Fellows, the uh, elders, in the organization, and they would vote on it. And you know, if it's like me, you know, it made me feel good that they voted for me to come into the organization. But there were quite a few people that done the same thing and applied, like mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. But they they didn't want them in there. You know, they just didn't so fit. Was selected. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. But. Uh, mm -hmm. But it, you know, it really was a nice organization, you know, just like Mrs. Walker said, you know, the Odd Fellows, they, uh, at films and things, you know, they had a performance that they would put on, mm -hmm. you know, like you have some other organizations that do the same mm -hmm. thing, you mm -hmm. know. But, um, you know, it, it was really a, you know, it was a real close-knitted organization, mm -hmm. you know. So it was like and these were like your brothers. Exactly yeah. right. That's what we were at breakfast. <laughs> okay. You know? But, uh, you know, uh, it was, like I say, it was an honor to be selected to go into the organization, mm -hmm. you know. And, of course, about the hall and about Newtown, you know, Newtown actually was the largest. Black, old, black community in the Blacksbury area. Okay. It really was. You, mm -hmm. know. you had more people there. You had people, well, just about on all the streets in Blacksburg, side streets, mm -hmm. but they were nothing compared with Newtown. They okay. really were. Okay. And lots of, and, and just about everybody had a desire to go to Newtown, there would be something going on just about every weekend, mm -hmm. you know. So even people who didn't go. live there yeah. saw it as okay. Okay. Um, Later on, uh, I belonged to a, well, a private club, you know, and we used to rent the hall from mm -hmm. the odd fellows, you know. And we would have dances, mm -hmm. dinners, and things like that, you know. But Newtown was a real, real nice place, I tell you. Let me and ask, the people, everybody there was the like, same question I asked about Newtown. What happened to the Odd Fellows? <laughs> what happened to what the happened? Odd Fellows? Yeah, why? The, the, the there are still some active chapters um, yes, it is. in the country. It's, what happened to the one here? It, well, the old people, when they dropped out, mm -hmm. you know, just like I could not go on with it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I have one other fellow that's at the end, Blacksburg. Mm -hmm. We were the only, the only two people that were living. And both of us had these odd jobs. Mm -hmm. And it was a matter then, you know, work or else. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we've often thought about the building, 
you know. Mm -hmm. We'd run by and look at it, you know, and the thing would be locked up, you know. Mm -hmm. I think it's a wonderful thing, you know, that, uh, that we're trying or working towards uh, getting this, you know, on the, uh, on the, on the, uh, yeah, on, you know, and, and, and we'll try to get a hold of all the pictures and things like that to go into it. The museum group is where to try to see where they go. <laughs> but uh, I think it's a wonderful thing that the Blacksburg Town and the mm -hmm. museum group are working towards that, you know. And I'm sure that all of us would be willing to work towards it also. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. No. Walker? Ms. Excuse yeah. me? Would you talk about St. Luke? Oh. How did you become involved with St. Luke and what happened? Well, I didn't really know what happened. Uh, for one thing, the uh, organization in Richmond, I think they shut down, mm -hmm. which also shut us down here. We had the, we had the privilege of uh, cashing in our, we all have policies, and we could cash in our policies if we want, wanted to, or we could have our meetings at our homes which we did have meetings at our home. Ms. Mamie Glenn, Mrs. Uh, Rice Dobbins, Mrs. Uh, Price, we all would still meet, which was very interesting. We kept the meetings going. Uh, but these, Mrs. Mamie Glenn, well, she moved away because she got sick. So we just stopped meeting. But the St. Luke's, like Mr. Mills said, was really something special. It was a special organization in which you could belong to, but you had to be asked, and you had to be voted in. They had what was called the younger people. <coughs> they were called juveniles. <laughs> and we would recruit them into the, to the uh, organization. And my mother, Miss Bessie Freeman, Miss Ruth Hilton from Roanoke, uh, Mr. Carrington from South Boston, they organized the juveniles. And they would come, Miss Hilton and Mr. Carrington would come up and meet with the young people, which was called the juveniles. Uh, it's so much that's in the past, and there's so much that you cannot remember. Because by not meeting all the time, and things just slips away. But as far as the hall was concerned, we, the young people used to have, I worked with the young people at my church at that time. So we would always have dinners, fashion shows, bingo parties, uh, mock weddings, dances, and they young people from Christiansburg would also come over and join the young people in Blacksburg at all these activities. Then the young people in Blacksburg in turn when Christiansburg had any activities going on, they would always go to Christiansburg, join them in their meetings. So it was just a going thing between the two communities and it was really great that they had such <coughs> friendship among the two communities. Oh, so many communities, they don't have this type of uh, friendship like Blacksburg and Christiansburg young people have. We didn't have the type of friendship that the, all the young people in Blacksburg had. Everybody was just like one big family. Mm -hmm. And just like she was saying, if you stepped out of line, it didn't make any difference if that was in front of this parent or that parent. The parent of the child was told, and you really got a spank. <laughs> that's the way the community was, so I guess that's why everything worked out so fine. <laughs> what the households of Bruce, were they a sister to your organization, Camille? Who was that? The households of Ruth. No, no, they weren't. They weren't. I know that there was such an yeah. organization because my grandmother mm. belonged to it. Now, don't ask me anything about it because I don't know. I just remember the name. Mm. Yeah, when we researched the history of the Oddfellas Hall, we found that there were 
at least four different organizations that at some point in time used or um, were affiliated with the Hall, and Household of Ruth was one of wow. those, yeah. and the Busy Bee Society was yeah, another, and of course, the Fellows Hall and the St. Luke. Um, <laughs> any other comments or you know, things that you want to share? I know we, we talk about a lot, and I, and I know that there are some stories that you want to keep private, that you don't want everybody to know about, so I'm not going to put you on the spot now so you share any of those. But is there anything else that you want to you know, get on the tape before we turn it over for you know, general questions and answers and comments? Anything else? Okay. So questions and comments from you. And just raise your hand so I can get to you, because I know there are many, okay? I'm going to hear and then hear. I just want to tell my relationship with Miss Ney. When I moved here in 63, and I, in the following few years, I became involved with the Republican Party, I met Miss Nettie. And Miss Nettie was a dyed in the wool Republican. <laughs> and I would go over there to her house and pick her up and take her to the meetings. And it was wonderful. It was just wonderful. Okay. Now, who was Miss Nettie? Miss Nettie. She was Huh? Miss Nettie Allison. She lived down the alley, they called it. Okay. okay. So she was a school teacher. Yeah, old Okay. The only school teacher. I saw another hand. Uh, I'm fairly new to the community, 15 years. And I was wondering uh, what the area, Newtown, uh, encompassed. How large an area? I would say a block. Okay. How, how large an area? It's no, it's no, it's uh, it's no different than what it is now, with the exception where across from Price's Fork Road, uh, what, what's that little mini mall? Yeah. That was part of it. That was, uh, that was part of Newtown. That's that was where, part of Newtown. That's where Laura and Nettie Anderson lived. We lived back where there's a mini mall, right where the red light, light you know, like you're throwing down Price's Walk Road, mm -hmm. and where that mini mall is, back and over there, is part where uh, the Andersons, Laura, Laura and Nettie Anderson, the Prices, and yeah. part of uh, yeah. Rollins. Rollins. and Rollins, mm -hmm. and lived down through there. So really, basically, you might say, Part of Price's Fork Road, Wendy's, <coughs> that area right in there uh, took in a, a new town. Okay. Did it begin right on the other side of the Actually, all all way, where Heaven's Hardware is, that was basically where Ms. Law Anderson's house right. in was. Right. Right. is, where Heaven's is. Okay. Is there another question? Well, uh, we've, been, we, we've only been here since this, the 1970s. And I'm sort of assuming that you went to high school at Christiansburg Institute. Where did you go to elementary school? There was a F school when I attended. It was on Clay Street on the hill where the middle part school. Of, middle school where the middle school is no. now. No, but high school. Where the high school used to be. Yeah, That's where the black school was then. Then we went to Harden Avenue. It was a black school all along. Where Harden, Ele Harden Avenue Elementary School is. We went to school there too. Now I I come from Wake Forest. I didn't hear. Was there only one teacher for that school, Miss Nettie well, Anderson? At one Russ. time, I went there when uh, a cousin of mine cut town with you, and she taught there, and Miss Camel. Yeah. It was just the two room. Two of them. Well, it was a two room. How they made it to? They draw the doors, and that made it two rooms. The bathrooms were downstairs. And it was a Miss Peggy Campbell from Christianburg. Do you remember her? And this and a cousin of my mother's, Talma Johnson. Mr. Then later they went on to one teacher. Mr. Alonzo Freeman, too. Yeah, yeah one, one teacher, teacher was one also teacher. principal there. Mm -hmm. Teacher. It's just one teacher when right. he was went there mm -hmm. when just he one. was teaching them. Well, I think Miss Nettie was the only one when I went to school mm -hmm. up on the hill. So at times there were two, and uh, at times there were only one. There was only one. Okay. Fall no. and grades. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you have? Yeah. Okay. 
when I went to school, um, I think Joanne and I were together as well, but I went to school up on Clay Street, and we also went to school where the Harding Avenue School was there. And when we were there, uh, Ann Barker Carroll uh, was, was the teacher for the fifth, sixth, and seventh grade, and um, first, second, and third, fourth grade, I remember Mr. Mrs. Holmes, Rosa T., and I don't remember who, who there were several other first for, uh, primary school mm -hmm. teachers, and I don't know who they were. Mrs. Anderson never taught me. Um, however, uh, everybody knew Miss Miss Nettie, and um, I, I can't remember the other teachers that were there. But the school, the Harding. Let me tell you about this Harding Avenue School. All right, the Harding Avenue School. Uh, was a two-room too. They, they took us from one two-room school to another two-room school. And, um, and if you know anything about um, African Americans, you know they, they think that they, they're appeasing, appeasing you. So they didn't have any uh, hot water. They gave us nice bathrooms, <laughs> but they didn't give us any hot water. So we, they, they, they um, the, the PTA, you know, got together and went out and gave some pupil placement applications in order for you to go to integrate the school system. So what, uh, I think my dad was the principal, uh, the PTA president at that time, and they, he took the um, uh, pupil placement, they, he, he went over there and asked for those, and so the next day, we had hot water. <laughs> Now, okay. I, I, for six years now, see, I wasn't in the Blacksburg system. I, I, for my elementary years, I was in Wake Forest. And we also had a two-room school. We had one teacher who taught six, six grades. Now, seventh grade year, we had to come up to Harding Avenue. Uh, and then from there, we went uh, eighth through twelfth uh, to Christenberg Institute. And a lot of our time was spent riding the bus. We started out at 7 o'clock in the morning, and we returned home at maybe about 5 or something in the evening. Uh, and we had to go Blacksburg, Vicar, Cambria, all over, when we, especially when we went to Christberg Institute. So, And then at one time, as far as the um, high school was concerned, Christiansburg Institute was concerned, um, there were many um, they didn't have transportation for the black kids to get to Christiansburg. I remember my sister and brother, they had to ride a cab to Christiansburg High School, which was Christiansburg Institute. They did not furnish transportation for any other black students to get to high school. And that's just something that people don't realize, you know, how blacks really had to do these things in order to survive, in order to get education and stuff like that. But there was, when you finished high school, when you finished elementary school, then you had your parents, it was Mr. Chippy Price that had a taxi also, and he would transport the students to Christiansburg Institute. Do you remember the buses that we had? Uh, Mr. Mills? <laughs> the first, I remember one bus that he had was nothing but a truck yeah. That's right. with a bed built on the back of it. No heat. And if there's any heat, it was always up there where the drive was. That the heat. And the seats were these old seats that you flipped over. You could you know, you've seen, seen a mat turn up to <laughs> then, we got, uh, then we got another bus. It was all together with the driving all together, but it was looked like the top was like this. <laughs> the top of the bus. And it was yellow and it was whatever the writing was on it. But that was the bus we rode with no heat. And then later years we got a School bus, but we mm -hmm. that was another story. But anyway, <laughs> I think that's we have what time. we had in Christian Mary when I went there. Mm -hmm. It was welcome. It was only four years. Right. Only four years. Okay. 
think we have time for one more question. So I'm going to let Tom. We're getting back to the Odd Fellows Hall. I wondered if you could uh, tell us uh, some about the, the social events that took place there. Uh, I mean, having been in there, I can imagine a, a band on the stage and people sitting around the outside of the building and dancing and kind of socializing and so forth, but it's, it's sort of a, a skeleton of a memory. So I'm curious about what kind of music there was, what kind of dances, how you all danced, what uh, sort of things took place uh, there in, in the hall. I think when I went, there was a, a man named Bill Hill. He used to live up on Lee Street. He used to have socials there for us, and he had a jukebox. That's where it was a big turn. 33 and a third, so. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it runs through my mind that did Lock Claire used to play there? You remember yeah. Mr. Yeah. Charles Reed mm -hmm. used to sponsor these dances and. And then, like I said, we had the square dance and yeah. dances. They had, they say, they had square dances, and then, you know, that was string music most of the time. You know, sometimes they'd have a drum, and then, then they would have good bands in. You know, the place was so small. You know, people would actually come up, pay to come in. They would be lucky to get in, but you'd have a crowd around the outside also. You know. <laughs> Most of the functions that went on were in the summertime, you know. Occasionally we'd have some, uh, some dances in the winter, and we had to, uh, like sometimes it was my job or our job, you know, Tony or myself, to uh, get some wood and coal and go stoke, start the fire, you know. We'd get the place good and hot, and everybody get in there, start dancing, everybody's going to be heading for the door because it'd be too hot. <laughs> The dancers were a lot of fun because the guys get on one side and the girls get on one side and everybody just started looking one side. And nobody would actually get up and ask anyone for a dance. It was a lot of fun. It was a great time there. It really was. And talking about the uh, Odd Fellows Hall, all the dances, and just to think that in 2005, Odd Fellow Hall will be 100 years old. And if you could see the floor, of that building now, you wouldn't believe that it was, it will be a hundred uh, years old in 2005. It's, it's just unreal. It's remarkable. The structure of that building is so much different than buildings and houses are built today. I mean, it was real lumber. And of course, the, I mean, you're not, you, you don't have any real lumber today. <laughs> and, but the, the members of the Oddfellows and the St. Luke's built that building themselves, you know. So, you know, back in those days, there was no education or anything. But people knew what they were doing, and they'd done it to live, you know, to stay here. And that's one reason we still have that building out there. I know uh, it was in a paper in 2002. Were we taking too much time? <laughs> that they had all these different uh, buildings that was in danger, buildings and whatnot. And they had the Odd Falls Hall listed as one. And I really got excited because I said, no way. We can't get rid of that hall. It's been there too long. We can't give it up now. And I would go out there to see, check, uh, check it out to see what was going on. They were saying it was deteriorating. But what had happened, a car had hit it on the side where they had pointed to it deteriorating. So I, after reading this in the paper, I called Ms. Dobbins, called Ms. Christian Price, and we got together with Alvin Hume. He went to Christiansburg and got the deed of the building, and we we didn't, we started working on it. We was meeting, but we didn't know what to do because we really wanted to save the building. And I'm just proud today to know that something is really being done to preserve this building. Okay.